never ask a PhD student when they're graduating because the timeline is going to vary from person to person, project to project, lab to lab, program to program for a bunch of reasons that are largely outside of the control of the actual student. And this can be something from, that from an outside perspective, it might not uh, be obvious. And so you think about like college, you think about high school, there's this set schedule, you know, in four years, you're going to graduate. Whereas in like grad school, it can be anywhere between like four and eight or four and seven years. Um, and so I'm going to tell you more about why this is as well as what it really means to graduate. Um, so I just got back this weekend from my graduation ceremony, um, but I actually graduated back in October. And so I want to go over some of these nuances and some of the things about like time frames and science and why it's really tricky. Um, and also, um, yeah, just how this all works and how it can kind of seem weird from the outside. And so if you have a family who is not from academia, they might be really well wishing. Um, they want to have you home. They want to have you move on to your next step. And so they'll be like, so when do you graduate? When do you graduate? You know, um, and then you, when you're like, I don't know, I'm trying my hardest. Um, it can be hard. Okay, so let's dive in. So it's super duper hard to predict how long anything is going to take in science. Um, this can be anything from a single experiment, how long it's going to take it to set up or to run it. Um, maybe your friends are like, oh, we're going to go get lunch or we're going to go do this around this time. Are you going to be done? You're like, oh. Um, to how long a seminar is going to run, to how long it's going to take to get back edits on a paper um, or some sort of report or that sort of thing. Um, and so it's hard to predict all these time frames. And then add to that the fact that, okay, well, what if your experiment works? What if it yeah, great. Um, but what if it shows you something that now you have to follow up with another experiment? And so in the in the beginning, this is all like really exciting. But then when you're like trying to get towards the end or you're nearing a report, and you're like, wait, I don't want to find something new right now. Um, I need I want this to be like tied up in a nice pretty knot. Um, so that can then lead to further directions. And if your experiment doesn't work, then you have to do troubleshooting. So there are all these different um, variables that are going to affect um, how long something simple is going to take. Now think about people have different PhD projects. So some people are doing things like studying aging in mice. And so they have these experiments that are going to last years and years. Um, whereas people who are doing like computational biology, maybe their project is using um, mining data that's already available. And so they don't have that problem of having to wait for the data. Um, or if they have collaborators, but they are still waiting for data. Speaking of collaborators, um, you might be having to wait for collaborators. You might be having to wait for co-authors. You might be having to wait for your thesis committee to find your time to meet. So there were a ton of different factors that can affect how long it's going to take a person to graduate and how long it takes a person to graduate is like should not be viewed as something that is like inherent to the person like if you graduate quickly that doesn't mean you're like super duper good if you graduate later it doesn't mean you're super duper bad um but everybody is going to graduate like graduate from the program like officially get their doctorate and everything at different times but then you typically have one ceremony um at one time in the year so it's unlike in like college or high school. Um, so maybe in college, they have like a graduation like each semester, but people are graduating at the end of semester. It's not like one person is gonna graduate on a Tuesday in March and the next person is gonna graduate on a Wednesday in July. Um, and so we typically, um, at least here, we have um, a really small class, there's only like 10 of us. And then we have one ceremony per year. And so the ceremony at the people, the people, the graduating um, class is actually going to be made up of people who started in like different entering classes. And so eight of us were in the entering class of 2016, and then two people were in the entering class of um, 2017. And I'm not rolling my eyes. There were like five bazillion cameras and I did not know where to look. Um, but so this was from our commencement convocation over the weekend. And so this is where um, you like, they walk down the aisle. And then what they do is you actually get this hood, um, this like graduation hood. And then um, that's like the only thing you actually get to keep. They keep the, the robes and the hat and stuff are for rent. Um, but so this is just like a ceremony type thing. And it's not, to me, the really more exciting part was when you actually get your, um, when you actually like graduate, when you actually become a doctor. So at the ceremony, you get the cape or you get the hood and you get this diploma. Um, and so I'm going to see, 
about like framing this because it's it's getting a PhD is a big accomplishment and so this is just like kind of like proof that you did it um but what is it that you when you're actually doing it the thing that was more exciting for me is actually doing the dissertation defense and this is when you actually become a doctor um so this and I was really really excited because my grandma and my mom and my dad got to go to that and it was really exciting. Um, so that was when I was actually becoming a doctor and this was when I was defending my dissertation or my thesis. And so I just wanted to kind of explain what all of this means. And so if you go back to the beginning of what a PhD journey is, and so there are some some things that have like set timelines, more like you would imagine for if you were going to college or that sort of thing. So each school is going to have some different program, uh, but you typically take your courses. So in our program, we squished all the courses into the first semester and then had lab rotations where we test out different labs and then we join a lab. In some programs, you uh, most programs, you do courses while doing lab rotations. So at the same time, and then your courses are going to stretch out longer. Um, but so there are some things with the set thing. Um, but then once you finish your course requirements, the time frame is going to depend on your project and uh, some of the other things that we've talked about. Um, and in order to graduate, the there are going to be certain requirements, and these are going to vary for different programs. Um, so in addition to having those course requirements, the courses are really like a small part of the big picture when it comes to a PhD program. Instead, you're really learning mostly at the bench and you're, the, the bulk of getting a PhD is doing this independent research project. And you're doing this research project that you're going to write up in a couple of ways, one of which is going to be your thesis or your dissertation. Um, and so this is going to be a long document talking about what you did, um, how it fits into the bigger, broader picture of things. Um, and I have posts on that if people are interested. And then the other write-up that you're going to do is, is typically for some sort of publication. Some programs require that you have a publication in order to graduate. Um, some do not. Some will accept like a preprint or enough that you have in progress, um, but they do want to see that you've done some presentations, that sort of thing. Some of the program requirements might have shifted a bit um, due to in these pandemic years because we had our research interrupted, um, but I am, so it was like an additional thing, like this was actually our first in-person graduation in three years for the school. Um, well, last New Year's was because of a hurricane, not because of COVID, um, but I think that there was a special sense um, yesterday that we had really uh, made it through a lot, and I just, I say that, but I mean, like, I was totally, totally privileged um, to have been able to have a job throughout where I could um, hunker down during lockdown, um, and I had all these privileges, and I didn't, I wasn't lose, I didn't lose any family or friends um, in the pandemic, and so I am incredibly fortunate. But I am going, to, but it, there are complications that come from having your um, graduate school interrupted um, by things. Um, and so the schools in the current years, um, the recommend the requirements and that sort of things might have shifted a little. Um, so that's just what I want to say. But I do want to say that I am incredibly, incredibly fortunate, incredibly grateful. Um, and I still can't um, believe that I made it um, for so many different reasons. OK, but so that was so this in to order to do this, so the, basically you, you do all this research, you write your thesis, and then you have to defend it. And so you give a talk in you know, like a public talk, and then um, you have a thesis committee um, and your thesis committee, you've been meeting with them periodically over the years, typically once or twice per year, depending on the program. This is another place that can, um, set you back time-wise if your program, um, like our program was really nice and that they organized the meetings for you, but if you're trying to find a date yourself where you're trying to find a date when all of these big wig scientists have time um, at the same time to meet um, and go over your stuff. And those, so those are like progress reports that things, and at the end, they meet um, after you do that presentation or depending on where the school is or whatever. So ours, we did it, we did a public presentation and then we did the questioning in private. Some people do the questioning in public as well. Thankfully, ours is in private. Um, and so then they question you. And if all is good, 
um, then they um, give you your doctorate or whatever. So typically they often make, you have to make a, some required edits to the actual written document, hopefully not too bad, um, but, but they like still call you a doctor even though it's not like totally official yet. Um, and then, so you do that and then you get your official, you're a doctor, you've graduated. Um, and then, but then it depends on how long you're gonna have to wait to actually go get your like official diploma and the hood and stuff. Um, Cause it's going to depend on when you graduate in relation to when the graduation ceremony is. So you have people who graduated like close to a year ago um, and then people who graduated like the week before the actual um, ceremony. And so your it, the length of that is going to depend on that thing. So it was kind of weird because everyone's like, "Oh, congratulations!" Yesterday and stuff. It's like I felt like I graduated in October. Um, I've actually like started a postdoc and everything. Um, so it was a bit weird, but it was really great being back there, in order to um thank everybody and that sort of thing. Another thing, time wise, was I was talking about how some programs they need you to have a publication. Now, having a publication, it can and a first first author publication. So when it comes to publications, often the like the key authors to look at are the first one and the last one. Sometimes you might see like an asterisk. Um, and so there's like multiple first authors or multiple corresponding authors. And so the last author is like the corresponding author. And that's who you're going to, that's who's like lab the work was done in and who you contact to email and who's gonna do all the coordinating with the admission, with the submissions. Then there is like the first author or authors are the people who did like the bulk of the work. So this can be like the grad student whose project it was in the lab of the corresponding author. Things get a little more tricky when you have multiple labs and that sort of thing. Um, but what happens in the traditional science publishing process is that you write this manuscript um, and then you send it to a journal and then the, there's an editor that's going to take a quick look, say, okay, this, is, um, this isn't right for us and just like reject it outright. Hopefully they don't do that. Um, publish it as is, it's perfect. They rarely do that. Um, what's happening more often is they pass it along for peer review. Um, and so they're gonna give it to um, several two to four scientists um, um, who are in the field who give it a fine comb reading and then they recommend that you like typically revise and resubmit it. Um, so they're going to ask you for, they often ask for additional experience and that could take a long time, um, various ways to reanalyze data. So they're, depending on what they recommend, this can take a very long time, depending on how long it takes them to actually finish their peer review, that can take a long time. Then you re, once you've revised and then you resubmit, then you can be waiting on that. And so this whole process can take a long time. And so this is one of the benefits of like preprint servers where you bypass this peer review, but you get it out right away. Um, but then you, so how I did it with my paper is that I did a preprint first and then we submitted it for um, publication. Um, but you, so you can do it simultaneously or you can do this preprint first, but this can be a way to kind of, some schools will accept this as a way to get that publication requirement if you need it um, in order to graduate. Okay, so speaking, that's one thing that you want to look into when you are looking into PhD programs is what are the requirements in order to graduate? Do you need to have a paper um, and that sort of thing? Um, also, you want to look into the stats on their average time to graduation and like make sure it's like, hopefully they'll give you like a distribution so you can see if it's like, it's not like a ton of people at, at both extremes, like eight years and like four years, um, but really you can see that there's like most people are graduating in around five years or so. Um, and also this can be vary by lab too. So you might want to see what the times have been for people in like st the recent students in the labs that you're interested in. And you wanna make sure that this your whole time in the program is going to be covered financially. Um, so typically in grad school, you're given a stipend. Um, so this might, so you're given some money. Um, so it's like a full-time job and so you're paid like a full-time job, uh, not like super duper rich for your full-time job, um, but hopefully enough to get by um, with, um, especially given that most a lot of schools are located in areas that have very high cost of living. And so hopefully the school has some like um, 
subsidized housing and that sort of thing. So there are a bunch of variables that you want to take into account. Um, but one is that the funding is guaranteed for the entire duration of your PhD. So if you only have guaranteed funding for like three years, but you their school has an average of like seven years, you want to make sure that the the lab that you join is going to be able to um, guarantee you funding and that sort of thing, that there are opportunities for you to do things. Often the funding is you have to do some sort of like teaching um, or it's just like your research. Um, and so look into all of those things so you don't be like surprised um, going into it. Um, one of the complicating things too about timelines is that you never know when it's going to be done um, until, so with the whole like, when are you going to graduate? Um, especially because as we talked about, there's, when you're getting to the end, you're often in the process of doing that paper. And because you have to wait on the editors and you have to potentially do more experiments and all of these different things, it can be hard to kind of predict, try to predict when you're going to be done, especially because if, if they end up rejecting your paper, then you have to do the whole thing over again. And so it can be hard um, when you're at the end point to really um, anticipate how long things are going to take, as well as when you're going to be able to set the thesis date, um, when everybody's going to be available, all of these different things. And so um, I ended up, so when it comes to, when you're at the end, like what, what's the next step? And so for me, the next step, I knew I wanted to do a postdoc, so a postdoctoral research um, opportunity. So I talked about this in another post, but this is basically where you typically go to another lab um, and do additional research to gain more skills, um, do research in a different area, just get more experience, various things like that. And so depending on what you're thinking for your time frame, you might stick around longer after you graduate. Um, people often stick around a little longer, sometimes a lot longer um, in the lab. Um, different schools have different allowances that they'll let you stay um, without having to go alternative pathways and that sort of thing. So like when I was there, I was up there a few months after I graduated um, and I was as like a post doctor or postgraduate student, like a graduate student comma post, um, but then if you're going to be there for longer, then it has more complicated things that you have to do with that sort of thing. Um, and also, if you are um, like an international student, you need to make sure that you're going to be able to um, that work all of that out in terms of any paperwork you might need. And so hopefully your program will be flexible with that. But this got me off topic because what I really want to talk about is like how you figure out the next step and what's for you. And so when you start looking for jobs, um, the good thing is that in science, because of everybody, because people know that the science is hard to predict time frames, and so hopefully they'll be flexible with you, and it's okay that you can't give them an official start date when you're looking for like a postdoc in a research lab. Um, so I ended up actually interviewing for my postdoc position, um, like a, over a year after before I actually joined, and I'm just like so grateful that. Um, that she actually um, saved um, saved space for me. Um, so I've actually, speaking of saving things, I've saved this note that she sent um, because I couldn't, inter I had to interview over Zoom instead of in person. And when you do it in person, they typically like um, take you out to dinner and that sort of thing. And so because um, she's going to do that, she sent me this um, like this um, gift basket. I've kept this note all of this time um, because I kind of just like wanted to keep had to keep reminding myself it was real um and now that i'm here i still can't believe it's real and so i had a great um time at cold spring harbor laboratory and i learned a bunch um had a very great experience um so a huge thank you to Limor joshua tor who is my boss my pi my principal investigator the head of the lab there as well as everyone else in the lab everyone at the school my thesis committee everybody like that um friends, family, classmates, all of those people. And so now I'm super duper grateful for everybody in Denitza Fujimori's lab um, here at UCSF. And so, yeah, so that is just a little behind the scenes of grad school timelines, um, because when people ask like, when are you gonna graduate? It can get, um, it can be really hard to remember. You have to keep in mind, like, remember when you went into this and you didn't know that you weren't supposed to ask that and you didn't know that there wasn't like a set timeline. Um, but then when people are asking you, um, they're asking out of like, like 
because they care um, because they're curious and that sort of thing. And so try to keep that in mind and know that they're not doing it just to like hit a nerve with you. Um, and so um, don't shame them or anything like that. Um, and but this is just kind of like an inside look behind the scenes at why the time frames are all over the place. Um, and yeah, so hope that helps. And if anybody's considering grad school, I uh, wish you all the best in your journey.